Did you know that almost 80% of people at some point in their career feel that their manager or their boss doesn't like them? When your manager doesn't like you, it's demotivating and stressful. It can limit your growth and promotion opportunities. And while the first instinct is to quit and find another job, the reality is that finding a new job can be hard and can take time. Also, if you love your job and if you love the company that you work for, it might make sense to try and fix things with your manager. So in today's video, I will share with you five ways in which you can get your manager to like you. Before we get started, a quick reminder to subscribe to my channel and hit on the notification bell icon so that you can be reminded every time I release a new video. And now let's dive right in. So the first tip that I have for you is to clarify expectations. Our priorities at work are constantly evolving. So it is important to ensure that the task that you are working on is aligned with your manager's expectations. It is important to understand what they expect from you at a regular cadence. Now, oftentimes, we have the expectation conversation with our manager when we start a new job or we change job roles. I recommend that you have this conversation with your manager every three to six months to make sure that you and your manager are aligned on the priorities and on the success criteria. The best way to understand expectations are in the one-on-one -on -one meetings. And after every one of these expectation conversations, you should walk away with one to three clear expectations that your manager has for you and also how they will measure your success on these expectations. When your manager knows that you care about their professional priorities, they will see you as a team member who is aligned to the goals of the team. This is one way you can get one step closer to them liking you. Before we move forward to the second tip, I want to clarify the concept of likeness at work. Now, most workplaces are hierarchical, which means that there is an invisible barrier that separates your manager from you. This hierarchical difference dictates how likeness is expressed in professional context versus a personal context. So don't expect your manager to act like your friend and always treat you special in team meetings or worry about you if you are stressed. They will still hold you accountable for the tasks that are assigned to you. You might interpret this as them not liking you while in their mind, they're just being professional. However, if your manager cuts you off in the meetings, or does not give you credit for your work or disrespects you, it's a clear indication that you need to repair the relationship if you want to hang on to the job. The next tip is to be a problem solver. Managers rely on their team members to execute on tasks. They expect team members to be able to find innovative ways to solve problems. So focus on solving problems rather than relying on your manager to solve problems for you or provide you solutions. Now, because every time you bring up a problem to your manager, it requires your manager to spend time, mental energy or resources to help you solve that problem. This takes away those resources from your manager. Now, I am not recommending that you don't ask your manager for support if you have a problem. I am recommending that instead of running to your manager as soon as you run into a problem, spend some time with the problem and come up with two to three possible solutions and then take those possible solutions to your manager and share which solution you will use to solve the problem. Give your manager an opportunity to provide insights on your choice of solution. This way, not only do you become a problem solver, but you also get the buy-in from your manager on the solution, which helps establish trust. Since your manager now sees you as a problem solver, you become an asset to the team. And managers love team members who are trustworthy problem solvers. I coach tech and non-tech leaders on how to fast track their careers and building problem solving mindset is the key to it. So if you would like to work with me to grow your career, use the link in the description box to contact me and let's get started on your growth. The next tip that I have for you is to ask. Ask your manager, how can I help? 
Managers usually work on multiple initiatives and are tight on time and resources. A great way to build trust with them and demonstrate your value is by helping them out by leveraging your unique skill set. For example, if your manager sends out weekly status reports to their manager every Friday, you can offer to templatize that format such that each team member can add their update in that format. This will ease off the load on your manager to collect information from each of their team members and format the report every Friday. This is a low effort, high impact task, which not only helps your manager, but also enables you to demonstrate your operationalization skills. So look for ways to help your manager out. Actively ask them, what can I do to support you in this? How can I help you with this? This will go a long way in getting your manager to like you. The next tip that I have for you is to appreciate your manager. No, I'm not asking you to kiss ass or suck up to your manager. I'm asking you to demonstrate your appreciation. I'm asking you to share your manager's accomplishments and appreciate them for their success. Early on in my career, I felt that I don't need to appreciate my manager even when I thought they did an excellent job on a presentation or a project. I thought it would be perceived ingenuine. The reality is that we all like to be acknowledged and appreciated. When someone acknowledges and commends your accomplishments, how does that make you feel? It makes you feel happy and proud, right? How do you feel about the person who congratulates you or appreciates you in public? You feel good about them, right? You like them. When you acknowledge others' achievements or lift others up, especially in public settings, it has a profound impact on how they feel about you. It gets lonely on the top. I know it. I've been there. So managers specifically appreciate the acknowledgement that comes from their team. By appreciating and acknowledging your manager, you encourage them to be better leader. You build trust with them. And when your leader sees you as their cheerleader, they like you. And the last tip that I have for you is to provide them with data. Most organizations today are data-driven organizations, but the reality is that the data is not readily available. So instead of performing exact task or answering the exact question that your manager asked, Provide them with contextual information with supporting data. I've been a people manager for over 20 plus years now and I always appreciate when my team provides me additional information, supporting data and fresh perspectives on an issue, specifically around new initiatives. This helps me as a leader to build a narrative that I can share with my leadership team. Managers like team members who think strategically and can connect the dots between the work that they are doing and how it aligns with the overall strategy of the company. Just make sure that when you do this, your perspectives and the data that you share still aligns with the overall goals. If it doesn't, you might be seen as someone who is not committed to the success of the team. Aligning yourself to the success of your team is critical for getting your manager to like you. I hope you give these tips a try to improve your equation with your manager. Let me know that you like this video by hitting the like button below and subscribing to my channel. I'll see you in my next video. Have a successful week. Bye-bye.